So again, if you're given a system, if you're given a system, so two equations, you should be able to graph it, substitute, and eliminate it, and all three ways give you the same ordered pair solution. Except, one, you don't want to do it three ways, right? And two, you don't want to do one that's harder than the other. Some systems should be graphed. In some systems, the easiest way is to substitute. In other systems, the easiest is just elimination. So it depends on which one you should use. So let's identify the characteristics. So when should you graph an equation? What characteristics would a system have if you should graph it? Damaris? Good. Both equations are in slope. intercept form. Both equations are in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. If both of them are written in y equals mx plus b, you should probably graph it. What's the one reason you shouldn't graph if it's in y equals mx plus b? What do you think you would not want to graph? If your intercept was a fraction, right? So let's say it's a whole number. What else? What if your intercept was plus 45? Do you want to graph plus 45? No. No. So... If your y or your b is a whole number and it's what? Between negative 10 to positive 10? I mean, most of the time it is going to be between those numbers, but if you had, you know, y equals 1 half x plus 45, that's a pretty big graph. Especially with, you know, the graphs that we have. That's not going to fit on there. I mean, if the graph goes up to 45, then yeah, graph it. All right, so if they're both in slope-intercept form, graphing is probably the best. Here's another duh moment. If you are given a graph, you should graph it. I mean, if you're not given a graph, that means you have to create your own graph. Do you want to do that? No. Probably not. And there's one more... situation where you should graph it. It's the first thing we learned about when we did systems. You have to graph it. There's no question. It cannot be substituted and it cannot be eliminated. There's one scenario that it has to be graphed because the graph is your answer. Inequalities. Inequalities. If it's an inequality, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, right? You have to graph it. Because the answer is where the shading intersects.
If both equations are written in y equals mx plus b and you're given a graph, you should probably graph it. If it's an inequality, instead of an equal sign, it's an inequality instead of an equation, you should graph it. You have to graph it. No ifs, ands, or buts. So let's talk substitution, everybody's least favorite. It feels like more work, and I get that. When should you use substitution? Vince? When one equation not both, is in slope-intercept form. When one equation is in slope-intercept form, one equation is in y equals, right? The other one's written in how? Standard, Standard form. There's another way. If one equation is written in slope-intercept form, meaning y equals, what's the other way? If one equation is x equals. So one equation has an isolated variable, and one equation is standard form. Then you should substitute. If one equation is in slope-intercept form, meaning one equation is y equals, and one equation or, excuse me, not and, or one equation is x equals, and there's a third way, we don't use it a lot, but if both are y equals, but the coefficients or y intercept are really big. Just like we talked about with graphing, like if you had plus 45 and you had to make your own graph, I don't want to do that, right? Or what if they're both y equals but they don't give you a graph? I mean, because in order to graph these and find the intercept, you have to be pretty perfect. And it takes a lot of time to draw a perfect graph. But for the most part, you should substitute if one equation is y equals and the other is standard, or if one equation is x equal and the other is standard. That's the go-to rule. Dylan. It does. It works. Better. And then last but not least is Elimination. When should you eliminate?
What's the standard elimination problem? What have we been seeing a lot of? Tell me more. Yeah, they're both in standard form. Which is AX plus BY equals C. The X and the Y are on the same side. There are three types of elimination problems. There's easy. What does an easy one do? Yeah, it cancels out automatically. You don't have to do anything. It's all ready to go. The X's are opposites of each other, or the Y's are already opposites of each other. There's medium type problems. And a medium problem, what do you have to do to it? Yeah, you have to change one entire problem, right? To their positive or negative. It's just one little change, right? If it's negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. And then, once you make that one change to the entire problem, one tiny little change, it's easy. And last but not least, there are hard elimination problems. And hard elimination problems... Nothing cancels out. Nothing cancels out. There's no easy change. So you have to do what? You have to... Yeah, you have to multiply to get, what do we want to say, uh, opposite factors or opposite reciprocals, not reciprocals, opposite, why is this so hard for me to, opposite terms. To cancel. All right, so what you're going to do on this second page for examples, and you can work with your tables. Uh, what was this titled? Match the system to the procedure. You are going to get six systems. And you can cut them out <coughs> and glue them, right? You have graphing, you have substitution, and you have elimination. You have graphing, substitution, and elimination. You are going to match each problem to where it belongs. Do they have to solve the problem? You do not have to solve it, but you have to match it. Now, here's the additional part that you're going to try to not hear. 
Once you match it, you then have to justify why you picked it. One of these. Once you match it, you have to justify. So you have to write down next to it why you picked graphing or why you picked this one as substitution. 